you very much for the opportunity to come and talk to you about something um, very close to my heart is the whole issue of developing social infrastructure in our regions. Um, it's been part of my work for, I suppose, the last 25 years. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Goulburn Community Hub. Goulburn is 100 kilometres down the road. It's a community of about 30,000 people in the local government area. It's a very interesting community because um, the oldest inland city in Australia, it's a city and a community and um, a heritage that has been based on the fact that that community was built on institutions. So you know we've got the jail, the supermax, which is actually five jails. We had a very significant um, uh, psychiatric hospital. Um, we have had um, institutions like um, children's homes, four of those. We still have probably the, the largest, um, um, yes, the largest density of group homes for people living with disability in a regional community. Um, we have the police academy. We have um, five, two, three, four, five large um, retirement and aged care facilities. We have um, an institution which is really the um, locked, uh, the, the the secure mental health facility for the region, and we have a secure dementia facility for the region. So you can kind of see what the opportunities are for people living and working in Goulburn really are about. It's quite different. It's not a community that has had a strong history of innovation. It tends to have been a community that um, is passively involved in its role as service providers. So, you know, we have, the, we have the ordinary things that are going on, our schools and our hospitals and our childcare centres, but we also have this overlaying of all of the economic activity that's in our community is really linked very heavily to the institutional processes that are going on all around us. And that's quite a different um, environment in which to try to stimulate um, economic activity the out, that's outside the expectations of the community. And uh, it's probably the biggest challenge that our local government uh, faces in trying to deal with the challenges for our community, which are about the, um, the growth of the Sydney-Canberra corridor, the development that's coming out of Sydney uh, at a massive rate. You know, the, the announcement about the, um, the second airport for Sydney is really putting a lot of pressure into the Windsor Caribbean Shire and down to us in Goulburn. And you can see that those people who are coming into our community, those people who are looking to invest, have some expectations about our community that the council understands that we can't deliver at this stage. So their social infrastructure planning process, which is just about to um, um, be embarked upon in a very big way, is about actually, in the very first instance, engaging the community in becoming much more active participants rather than passive players in the things that are going on around them. So the work that I've been doing for just over two years now, although we started what we call the Social Inclusion Network in 2004, and that was actually to bring together, we, uh, the, the region Goulburn had been um, declared a regional migration centre, so we were having quite a few refugee families being allocated to Goulburn. Um, and we, so we decided, we created what we call the Social Inclusion Network, bringing together services, industry and um, community organisations to kind of rally around these refugee groups that were coming into the community and trying to create um, good social networks for them to support them 
uh, in our industries. And at the time, we had uh, the abattoir, um, the, you know, the meatworks. We had um, busy packaging. Um, we, you know, we had we had a few different industries. We've had several of those industries closed down, and so so from two thousand and four, trying to build a kind of a social um, network and interagency that was much more actively involved in um, visioning for the future, um, and that kind of brings me to the the first challenge that I saw in Leonie's um, presentation this morning, and that was where she was looking at all of those factors that come into the issue of uh, social infrastructure planning, policy wasn't there, government policy wasn't there, and boy, does that make a difference. A change in government policy can suddenly just take the rug from under a major kind of effort that's going on. And the change in government policy that impacted on us at the time were, were two, twofold. The first was um, at the change to the immigration policy, which really, um, all of a sudden, quite a few of our service providers were suddenly left unfunded and so just disappeared from the space. That leaves a big hole in your intellectual property, uh, in, in your intellectual capital in the community as well. And then the second thing we saw, um, another, which we, has now become an opportunity for us, is the policy around the NDIS. And in, you know the big changes that that's making for uh, the, the residents that are living in our community because we have been a community that's provided a lot of services and families have moved into the region uh, if they have uh, um, kids or family members with high needs. So we've had we have a lot of specialised services and we've become the regional centre for a lot of specialised services that are really going to be um, part of the NDIS framework. <coughs> so the community hub project, which I've been involved in, it was really interesting to hear about the club because. Um, we discovered that the interagency, the, the social inclusion network, as we called it at the time, kind of was too nebulous for people to understand. And it became really important to us that people could kind of have a tangible project, that they could see where their efforts were actually making a difference. And I think that was our first big lesson, that you can talk the big picture and you can talk policy and the grand ideas, but in fact, you to, to ground a project around social infrastructure really is important. So we set, search, set sail looking for um, a community building. We don't have the equivalent of a large accessible community centre in Goulburn. Um, we, we as, a, as a historic town, we have lots of heritage buildings. We've got adaptive reuse going on, but nothing that kind of quite fitted the mould of what we were envisaging at the time. So um, we worked very hard with the local um, council and we also had a very generous philanthropic um, sponsor who provided us with a building which um, enabled us to suddenly pull together a whole lot of people who had been willing participants along the way but we saw them kind of dropping off their interest kind of waned as things didn't seem to be happening but as soon as we got the building on the agenda all of a sudden our volunteers came out of the woodwork all over again and so just uh, our organization which we then incorporated is called community plus it's a registered charity with the um, ACNC. It, um, that means that we do have the opportunity to um, receive donations. That, that in itself, a structure, as um, Leonie said, about how getting your structure and things in place early on is actually really important because it can actually prevent you um, accessing lots of funding sources. So getting that framework in place was really important. We have a range of um, activities that are going on, but now the hub is the way in which we can kind of bring everyone together in the same place, on the same page. We have set up a community college. It's the first community college in New South Wales set up in 15 years because, of course, there is no funding for adult and community education in New South Wales, um, unlike other state authorities 
um, New South Wales has moved away from funding community education. So this has to be a self-funding um, opportunity, and it is, and it's it's one of the ways in which we're kind of talking about sustainable long-term goals. We've set up a community directory, which is online community directory, which will enable us to connect not just with Goulburn, but to actually try to take a much more regional framework, um, a regional view, pulling together the, the smaller local government areas around us um, and sharing information that is about services which are kind of coalesced in Goulburn but reach out to the region. Um, so we, that directory is an online directory. It's being built at the moment with lots of engagement. For example, from one of the schools has got a digital team and they've been doing photographs and they've been doing data entry and the back end of this thing. It's a great project for them, which is all part of their HSC portfolio. So it's a lovely way to engage young people in thinking about the future opportunities for the region. We have... Um, but the Community Plus was engaged by the council to actually go out and talk about the um, uh, the proposal that came to play into play for the am amalgamation of our local government boundaries. So Community Plus was the face of the council and the communities. We went out, we held forums, surveys, you name it, we did it um, in the parks and in the shopping centres, and actually started a process which was about community having a say about what the future is for them. And that, that was kind of like the first time it had happened, that the community had driven that conversation itself. In the past, the council has pulled in consultants, and of course we know what happens. The consultants kind of absorb the information, write a report and then disappear and then we don't kind of have that knowledge base um, grounded in the community. But we had uh, 47 volunteers who actually went out and talked to community organisations and presented the options and engaged with the community. And those 47 volunteers are still in the community talking about what they discovered and the connections that they've made, which is really great. We, um, um, we mobilised people in a way that we hadn't seen in our community for a long time. And in that mobilisation, they kind of started to say, well, we're part, of, we're part of something that's a bit different. And the way in which we're able to bring that all together is through this building now, which we call the Goldwyn Community Hub, and which we only opened officially, we had our official grand opening only um, a, few months, a few months ago. So. It is a building which was, um, it's kind of come out of, it's a bit of a phoenix from the ashes. It was actually a building that was um, built for the railway, it was a railway barracks for the engine drivers who used to come from Sydney to Goulburn, stay overnight and then do the next stage down to Albury. It's been empty for about five years and then it was taken up by the St Vincent de Paul as a homeless men's shelter. And when I said to you about the importance of policy, the critical issue for us, we had a 40-bed men's hostel for homeless men in the region that overnight was closed simply because of a government policy that said uh, in New South Wales, it's, it, the policy is called going home, staying home, and it was a policy about saying, no, we're not going to create um, long-term um, support for homeless people, we're going to actually try to get them back to their communities and where they are. So that suddenly we had an empty building in the middle of town that the community had invested a lot in, in terms of supporting Vinnies, and the, you know, the night van and all, you know, all kinds of things had happened and then all of a sudden that had gone and here was this building. 40 bedrooms, a commercial kitchen, a large recreation room, right in the middle of town, prime real estate next to the park, which is iconic in Goulburn, sitting there empty for two years. And the owner of the building, which is not the council, actually um, gave it to us, Community Plus, on the basis that we could open this community hub. So I'm going to leave it there because I think there's probably lots of questions that you might want to talk about. I have got a really corny video to show you. And the reason why I say it's really corny, but it's really important, the video is really important, 
because it was one of the homeless men who lived in that shelter who became involved in the filming and the editing. And I kind of think it's a little legacy to this guy who really was on the down and out that he actually became involved in what the future of this, the new future of this building would be and was able to actually be part of the future for himself. And he's really, he's now living in the community, actively involved in the hub as a volunteer. And I think the future is really bright for him. And it, you know, he's really turned a corner. And that for me kind of, it, it personalizes all of the work that we've been doing and it, uh, gives us a bit of a, a, a shake up for the future. But we have a, a grand vision, we have buy-in from the community that we've never seen before, and I hope that this is really a great example of how you build social infrastructure. It's not about the building, it's about the people that we've engaged, it's about discussing what's missing in our community, what's the community that we want to be in the future.